All right, guys, it's Mazda Monday again. Last week we did the oil change. As you can see, it's very gloomy out here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, like I said, spark plug change this week. Um, very short and simple. Usually for me, um, you wanna change the spark plugs. Like if you have like a turbo or supercharger at every 40K miles. Um, if you're naturally aspirated, they say 75K miles, but that's for a stock car. Um, if you're gonna be modified, I would cut that life down to maybe 60K if you're still naturally aspirated. So um, I obviously you guys know I highly recommend doing the, the upgraded spark plugs that are in um, the Nissan 370Z and the Nissan Skyline. Um, I'll leave the link in there for what specific um, NGK they are. They're one step colder. So they're a heat range eight versus the heat range seven. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna, these are pre-gapped. And because I don't have a turbo model, the gap on these are already smaller than stock. So I don't need to make them any smaller. So pretty much I, before I even um, put these in, I check the resistance on them to make sure they're correct. Um, and all the resistance are pretty similar. So I don't really have to do anything. Um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you, it's very simple to change the spark plugs. I'm gonna come over here and so you guys can see all you need um you need a 10 mil 10 mil, 10 millimeter can barely talk um and a eight millimeter socket so those are the only two you're gonna need for as, as far as like your wrench goes right and then you are gonna need your spark plug socket right and for the mazda sky active for all of them you're gonna need a 9 16th spark plug socket all right so you get your 9 16 spark plug socket you can buy them for like five to six bucks um, and that is what you're gonna use on to, to get your spark plugs out um, other than that obviously you need your ratchet um, some people use a torque wrench I don't use I've never I haven't used a torque wrench in a long time to do spark plugs because usually you can do hand tight and just fill it out you can kind of tell if you're you know if you've done this a while you can kind of tell when you're getting to the point of you might be stripping them uh, if you don't i'll leave the torque specs in here so you can use a torque wrench uh, but i typically just hand tighten them um you know not too crazy tight but enough to where i know it's not going to go anywhere all right first thing we're going to do we're going to take off the uh, terminals off the battery i got my nice little covers here um yep using a 10 millimeter you can remove i mean usually you're supposed to remove the ground first whatever i'm holding it in my hand so i disconnect both most people just disconnect the um the negative i just disconnect both and i actually just kind of discharge it a little bit so it kind of resets the the computer's memory because when i put these um, spark plugs in they're going to be a different resistance because they're going to be fresh so got that off that's the 10 millimeter now i'm going to switch over to my eight millimeter make sure your car is cooled down especially if you have a turbo model because it's hot um, fortunately, I have the naturally aspirated with the supercharger. My car stays cool. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the top bolts up here. I got my four eight millimeters. I'm going to take off. By the way, if you need a little tool like this, Walmart has kits that are like $15. Um, and it comes with a whole set with different varieties of um, sockets and bits for like, you know, if you have Torx bits, flat heads, cross tips, you'll have all that stuff and it's very convenient so especially if you have a supercharger getting into these tight spaces this allows you to do things like i was able to put on my supercharger pulley because i had this um, so it's like a hand driver and uh be careful you don't want to lose your bolt so when you do these guys put them in your pocket or most people put them up here just remember where you put your bolts so yeah i'm gonna take off all four of these and what i do is up oh, be careful I am going to individually, see some of you guys won't have this in a way. The only ones that are gonna have this in a way if you have cylinder deactivation for the NA models, you'll have this box in a way. Um, if you don't have cylinder deactivation, you won't have this, this contraption on the top, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. So all these, these hoses won't be here, but if you do have a turbo model, you're gonna have even more hoses and you're gonna have a few more um, bolts or nuts to take off. You'll have like a nut for the um, the turbo manifold. You'll see the bracket up there that you have to kind of remove out of the way. But um, we got those off. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my first one. And I have my, my uh, 9 16 uh, spark plug socket and I have my extension and I have my ratchet. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, put that on there 
get that on there, drop it in. Make sure. Yeah, guys, you know I'm, I suck. Let's go ahead and do it like that. Oh, gotta press the button. Forgot how to do this. I don't do it so often. All right, and nice and easy. Come here. Usually, once I get it loose like this, I'm always worried about cross threading. So once I get it like kind of loose, I'll just remove it with my hand. You don't have to do that. You can keep doing the ratchet style. All right. So now, got the first one almost out. All right, first one removed. Looks pretty good. Doesn't really look like there's much um, damage to it. I'm gonna change it anyways because I don't wanna have to change it in the future because I feel like in another 10,000 miles, I'm gonna wanna change it. And as you can see how it's white like that, um, it has been running a little lean because I have been using a little bit of ethanol in some of my tanks, but as far as everything goes, tip doesn't look damaged. I might reuse these in the future, but I just wanna add fresh ones in because I'm doing all the maintenance and I might be getting back on the dyno. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my new one, put it in there, and just remember, you wanna start it with a hand thread. So be careful, you don't, oops, you don't want it to drop in there like I just did because you don't wanna damage the tips. Be very careful. If you drop one of these on the ground, I do not recommend using the spark plug after it's been dropped on the ground because if it cracks, it's gonna cause all kinds of issues. Um, so yep, I did that little tighten it with hand and then I'm gonna come over with my ratchet. Let me pop that in there. And when I torque it down, I do like small little wrist turns. And once it gets to the point where my hand can't freely turn it a little bit and it's getting a little tough. That's it. I don't do too much. And like I said, I'll give you the torque specs at the uh, in the description if you want to use a torque wrench because you're not you're not confident in yourself. All right, now I'm gonna just go ahead and continue this with the next four. All right, guys. First two, um, I already put those back in. Um, what I do is as I do my spark plugs. Um, each one I put the coil pack back on the reason why I do this um, is because If you take all four of these coil packs off all four of these coils It's easy to mix them up and put the wrong one on the wrong cylinder Now if you put the wrong coil pack on the wrong cylinder It's gonna fire in an incorrect pattern and you're gonna get misfires So what you want to do is after you replace each one of these put the coil pack back on. You don't have to secure this yet, but just put it back on so you don't get them confused. I accidentally confu uh, confused two of these, you know, cylinders um, three and four one time, but luckily I caught it before I started the car. If you do do it, the car will crank, but you're gonna have a loud ticking noise if you put the coil pack on wrong and your engine's gonna rock crazy. So every, every spark plug that you change, put the coil back on just to, you know, mitigate having that happen. All right. All right, we're now on our last coil. Um, and just some simple things I wanna show you. Um, just so you know, when you're opening up your spark plugs, you know, they give you specific instructions. So when you see your spark plugs and you see like the way it's opened up, you wanna be careful not to damage this tip. So if you look at the, the label on here, this is actually the orientation of the spark plug, how it's sitting in here. So when I open this up, the tip will be down and the back end will be this way. So you always wanna open it up from the back end just so you don't risk dropping that tip. All right, so we'll leave that down there. And like I said, we're on our last one. And I saved my spark plugs just in case I might need them for some situation. As you can tell, I have not removed any of this stuff. If you need to, you can remove these. I don't personally need to remove them. I just work my way around them, pull it out. Uh, for the turbo model, you will need to disconnect a couple hoses. But for me, I just work my way around using my extension. So I really don't have any trouble with um, removing these because I just move around them. All right, so we're on the last one. All right, I retorqued down my eight millimeters that on top of the coils and I came back and did my 10 millimeter retorque. So that's all good. And now I'm just gonna, you know, turn on the car and make sure there's no weird sounds. And uh, that's it, just spark plug change. Everything's all good. I don't hear any weird ticking noises. So if, if there was something wrong, if you did it wrong, you would hear a loud ticking. You do hear it ticking, but that is the fuel injectors actually. So this ticking that you hear on the Skyactiv motor, 
it's just a fuel injector so don't think anything's wrong with your car if you start hearing the ticking that you didn't hear before it's probably because you wasn't paying attention all right so that's it for this and i want to show you our new project car that we have give you more details on it All right, guys, I'm picking up this project car I'm getting for a friend. Got a little bit of damage, not too bad. Um, windshield's cracked, but you know, missing a different rim on it. Nothing crazy. The car overall looks pretty good. Paint's not messed up, that's just uh, dirt. So it got pretty good paint job on it still. Got a little bit of hell damage at the top. Um, let me go ahead and show you. I took the engine cover off earlier, but um it's automatic but yeah this is going to be a car used for it's going to be used for a uh, doordash so it doesn't have to be perfect go ahead and show you under the hood and i'll put that engine cover back on so yeah this is under the hood obviously had the engine cover on it nice and clean hide all the dirt but um Right now, I mean, the coolant is definitely low, and that's probably what caused it to uh, end up having our main issue. So right now, I mean, that's a good battery or whatever, uh, but cylinder two, there's a rod knock. I took these off earlier. I got those in my car, but there's a bad rod knock. I'll uh, show you on the video, uh, but yeah, I got a ECU I can tune. I wish our battery, our ECU was on the side like this so I could see it, but ours is behind the battery. But yeah, um, I'll be picking this up. This is obviously low coolant. Um, and that's probably what caused the uh, the rod knock to happen. Um, I didn't see coolant inside. There was some rust on the plug, so there might be some coolant damage. We'll, we won't know. I'm just gonna actually replace the whole motor. But uh, this is the car that my friend will be getting. Yep. Yeah, just put it right here. All right, there you have it, guys. Uh, just a quick glimpse at the car. So we're going to do it in snippets. Um, so that was a spark plug change video. Um, nothing really special about it. Um, next week, we are going to do our automatic um, transmission drain and fill. And then I'll give you more details on the car. I know some of you could probably hear the car um, knocking a little bit when they were pulling it off. Um, but maybe we'll go over everything that needs to get changed out on that car at the end of the, of the drain and fill video if we have time. I'm trying to cut these videos down to under 20 minutes because um, I know everyone doesn't have a long attention span. So that's it for this week, guys. Just more short videos. So like I said, so next week is um, drain and fill. And then uh, we'll do rear differential and transfer case following after that. And yeah, whatever else you guys wanna see as far as maintenance, um, I'm gonna to have to change my belt tensioner soon and um, just just cause, because I'm, and I'm gonna put a new belt on it just because it's preventative maintenance, you know guys? So, catch you later. <laughs>